So you finally have your F1 visa and now it's time to get that education in the US and make your dreams come true. But before you board that flight, I want you to hear some real student experiences so that you're fully prepared for what's to come and you don't start this journey feeling lost or confused. In this video, I'm going to cover important points about accommodation, expenses, health insurance and safety. All of these are must know, so keep on watching. Hi guys, my name is Shachi and I'm a travel and a visa coach. On this channel, you'll find lots of useful videos about the US visa process, so make sure to check them out. So let's start with the most basic requirement and this is something which you're going to need immediately as soon as you land in the US and this is your accommodation. Now when it comes to accommodation, there are many variables to think about. Who to live with, how many people to share the space with, how far to live from the campus and of course how much to spend. But all of this boils down to one main decision that you need to make, whether to live on campus or to live off campus. While I feel that there are enough resources to explore the off-campus housing, there is not enough information about living on campus. So for this, I have with me Ananya and Ananya is currently pursuing her master's in Cal State LA. She lives on campus and she is here to share her experience. I don't know because the general opinion is that dorms are very expensive, right? So most people, mm. uh, I don't know, I feel they are scared yeah, to most stay people, in uh, It is actually, there is actually $300, $300 of difference. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, given the convenience given that you the don't convenience have to... And you get to meet with cool people uh, who stay in dorms and then it is very close to get to classes and then whenever you want to rest, you can just go mm -hmm. by. So I How has your experience is, been in the dorms? Like anything which you feel that... So I have many activities. I can play the all the I can use all the uh, facilities. facilities and features mm -hmm. offered by campus. There's a games room. There's a activity launch and pretty, uh, more uh, activities to you know get the communities together. They happen in, in the dorms and they have the silent disco and uh, they offer free meals once in a while about some event. They do celebrate different kinds of festivals. Yesterday there was biryani at the cafe. Oh, wow. <laughs> How different was it from what you expected? Is it in line or was it like? I did not expect much. I did okay. not expect anything on the cost side because you I knew. To spend. No, I knew I was going to stay in dorms. You're right. So the dorms fee was Pretty actually mentioned. Yeah. Mention. So it is like eight thousand dollars for nine months. Mm -hmm. So you get the accommodation for the winter break as well. Block 150, 100 are the meal options that are offered in the cafeteria. So I chose 150 in the first semester and I had to pay around $1,000. 150 means $1,000? $1,000 okay. for four months. Okay. Next up, we're going to be talking about expenses. Now for many of you, this might be the first time that you are staying away from your family, from your parents and managing the budget and the expense on your own. And when you start living in the US, you'll realize that there are multiple components within expense that you have to take care of. It's not just about managing your tuition fee. You have to think about your rent, utilities, food, grocery, travel, and also be prepared for some unexpected expenses like medical care. So to give you a very clear strategy for managing all of this, I have with me Kavya, who recently graduated from New York University, and she is gonna share all the details with you and also tell you some smart ways in which you can cut down expenses like health insurance. So you studied in one of the most expensive cities in US and I think probably the world. So yes. give us an idea of what were the actual numbers, like what expenses did you incur during your time as a student? So for someone coming to New York, um, for those coming in the spring uh, 24 semester, I think my ballpark somewhere would be between $1,500 to $2,500, um, you know, including rent and utilities. But if I'd only have to break it down to utilities, then somewhere between $300 to $400. So that would be a ballpark. I think these are the kind of expense which everybody has on top of their mind, right? And somehow yes. they are preparing and planning for it. That, okay, I need to pay rent, I need to buy food, I need to go out, I need to travel. But yes. uh, during your journey as a student, was there something which was unexpected that, okay, you didn't really, you know, be prepared mentally that, okay, I'm going to have to shell out money for this as well. But something that I wasn't prepared for was health insurance costs in the US. So mm. initially when I paid my first semester's tuition, my health insurance um, cost alone was 1800 And in my opinion, um, what I first thought was, you know, it's probably 1800 for the entire year for two semesters, but I was wrong. Um, so in the US, um, 
health especially in universities depends on university to university but health insurance can either be paid by semester or it can be paid annually but um that was a very unexpected cost because um in the winters health insurance um prices can go much higher for example um in the fall semester i paid $1800 but in the winter i ended up paying $2700 so that's a considerable you know a steep hike in in what we pay for insurances that was a very unexpected cost so not only did you have an unexpected cost but it only increased yes <laughs> but why is this health insurance cost such a big thing because i think in india we don't really uh, i think have the concept of you know True. buying preparing for insurance because it's really simple right you can walk in yes, just an appointment you can pay yes. you yes. of course have family support which you don't have in the us so um why is insurance such a big deal so insurance in the us is is dicey it's, it's a very tricky concept to understand right in india we probably as kids we probably never thought of insurance until you know we were 18 or 21 or our parents um basically had our medical insurance is covered or our parents employers had our medical insurance is covered but um here it's tricky because the laws vary it varies from state to state and yeah. another thing makes it tricky are all the terms that a lot of people get confused about so that's why it's really important to know a lot and research a lot about us health insurance so how did you navigate this because i know that you didn't like you know end up paying all of that money but you found a way to save that so tell yeah. us more about that what i did was in the second semester i researched and i found out about kimber health so kimber health is an insurance brokerage company and um, they uh, were providing a plan called the essential plan which is a 0 uh, plan and uh, this plan i didn't i actually didn't realize it in the beginning but this plan is also open to international students that's one thing students are afraid about if in any case will this affect my immigration status but no this insurance plan will not affect your immigration status by any chance and the essential plan is affordable obviously because it's 0 dollars and the coverage is unlimited that's what makes the essential plan very different and and very um, you know a great plan for international students compared to all the other plans offered in new york state so you pay 0 dollars and you're covered completely yes unlimited till you are on student status essentially till you are a student status and um, also even if you are on opt you can still have the insurance so for me right now because i'm looking for jobs i still have this insurance so you came like you had already paid right for your second sem insurance yes so is how did you make this transition and is it possible for others who might you know have already paid the university so at NYU yes it was possible so what i did was i paid i had already paid my fee my hmm. tuition for that semester and my tuition included the 2700 dollar um amount i paid for my health insurance so what NYU does is if you are waiving your insurance off within that time period for that semester you will get it reimbursed okay. and you will get it reimbursed pretty quickly uh, insurance sounds so complicated so was getting the insurance also as complicated what no surprise surprisingly um getting the insurance was not complicated so all i had to do was go on kimber health's website very easy set of steps uh, it took me about 5 you know roughly 5 minutes to apply and it's just basic information where you stay address proof and things like that and you'll probably be done within 5 minutes and another there's something that i forgot so i know a lot of people think oh my god this plan is too good to be you know to is it a scam <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's what people true. think like too good to be true but um no the reason why uh, the essential plan is priced at 0 dollars is because it's backed by the new york state health department and mm. uh, so that's a, it's a program that's backed by the state's uh, health department and you know they want to provide subsid- subsidized health insurance services so i think it's it's a great benefit if you you know if students international students can avail these services because it's open to them and um, another exciting thing um you know that i found out was um after i enrolled um onto the plan i had a 75 dollar you know quarterly um otc gift card which is an over the counter gift card i could buy over the i can buy over the counter medicines groceries or anything you know from specific Ooh. stores from a list of stores another thing i'd like to add on and this is for all those gym lovers um if you guys go to the gym regularly and let me tell you new york gyms and their monthly memberships can be very expensive yeah, so, i can imagine with, <laughs> yes so with the with the essential plan with the essential plans um with the united healthcare's essential plan you can avail up to $400 annually you can get your gym membership amount reimbursed and and that would be up to $400 annually so that's another very exciting benefit 
So if you're going to be studying in the New York state, then I highly recommend that you check out Kimber Health. It's a no brainer. You need to be on their insurance plan. And if you're going to universities other than the New York state, then Kimber Health also has affordable insurance plans for you. So do take a look. The link for all of this is right below in the description box. So the next point that I'm going to talk about is something which is very, very important for both boys and girls. That's safety. When you're in your home country, you will automatically know how to take care of yourself, what to do, what not to do. But when you come to the US, it's going to be a completely new dynamic and new environment. And a lot of these safety do's and don'ts will not be clear to you initially. So I highly recommend that you spend the first few days thoroughly understanding the location that you, you are going to choose to live in and the location of your university. And you should get information about which areas to avoid, what time of the day you should not be alone, and also what are the resources available to you in case you face a safety threat. The easiest way to do all of this is to join WhatsApp groups that are going to be floated by your university, by your student council, and by your seniors and your peer group. And these WhatsApp groups are going to give you updated information about all the safety protocols. I have with me Kaushik who is currently pursuing his masters in University of Southern California and Kaushik is going to share his personal anecdote of how he faced a safety concern and how he takes care of his safety now. Safety is I'm concerned because I have I have I have experienced gunshots in front of me in Seattle. Oh my god, are you so, serious? Yeah. I've been in Seattle downtown and, and you're still here. Yeah. Hats off to you. <laughs> I've seen gunshots, so yeah. So it's it is scary. Since I have been living here for an year, now I I pretty to. much know hmm. where it's gonna be unsafe, where it's gonna be safe right. and also, university has taken a lot of measures to ensure the safety of students. Like we have free lift service, so from uh, 6 p.m. till 2 a.m. we have free lift service and throughout the two mile radius of the campus. Okay. So and that then you can of, ask for a drop, is it, to go anywhere? It's just like normal booking a cab or Uber okay, or a Ola, which you do okay. in India. Okay. Similarly, we have a lift over here. Okay. Lift and as an application, just yeah. book a lift. And uh, since you are a U.S. student, you have registered with your email ID. You have a free lift pass, so you okay. won't be charged anything for okay. your uh, okay. yeah, transport. Yeah. So if you're still here, still watching the video, do give this a thumbs up. And let me know which university you're going to. I'm really, really curious to know which universities you've got your admits and your visas for. So do comment below and let me know. Next, I'm specifically going to talk about the first week in US. Now, I feel that the first week in US is really the toughest. Because not only do you have to get done with a million things, but you also have to deal with feelings of loneliness, homesickness and just not liking the food or the weather. And there are small things that you can do which seem tiny but they make a big difference. And I have Ani from Golden Gate University and Ani is going to share two such hacks with you. So let's listen to him. Anyone and everyone coming to the US, uh, the first thing that I would recommend is make sure that you have an international data plan. Because once you land here, you'll, the only access to internet is Wi-Fi of the airport, which is bad. So the, that's the number one thing, because that is your point of contact with everyone in the US, right? You come to the US, you need to talk to anyone, that's your point of contact. Second, uh, try to find a contact of your friend, your brother, or someone else who already stays here, who can pick you up on that day, so you have a place to stay. If not, second best option is Airbnb. Airbnb is much more cheaper than hostels and hotels. It's, uh, it's the best option if you don't have anyone in the US. Next, we're going to talk about culture change. Now, there are a lot of differences between India and US, but I feel that the biggest one is in the way people interact with each other. And as a student, you will have multiple instances in which you need to pitch yourself, you need to reach out to someone, or give a presentation or a talk in a group gathering. So it's really important for you to understand these differences and be prepared for the nuances and the languages and the terms that are used in the US. And this will ensure that you don't face any embarrassing incident or you don't face any culture shock. So I have with me Kaushik and Kaushik is doing his masters in University of Southern California and he's going to share his personal experience of how he adapted to the change in the culture and his experience has some really funny incidents in it so do give it a watch. So the tips so I will... What advice do you have for yeah. students coming to US? For students coming, I would say there are there are some events uh, which are held in India itself, like meet and greet events. Pretty much, like you should attend them. 
they are really important because the network and the kind of relations that you build are are pretty uh, helpful when you come to US over here. I did not, and I found I, I found that those were helpful for other students. So I would rec recommend that. There are a lot of groups that form, are formed before coming to US. Join them, be active on them. Networking, as uh, as just mentioned, is a very important part of this entire process. And after coming here, there will be a cultural shock. People here dress differently, talk differently. There are there are certain terms which are used in a much different fashion. For example, whenever you go to a restaurant, you ask for a tissue. Mm. Here, you don't call it a tissue. If you ask for a tissue, they'll give you a toilet paper roll. <laughs> okay, that's that's what happened to my friends. So, okay. you will find these culture shocks. You'll so find you these differences. For? You ask for a to for a for a towel. Towel or a, or or a napkin. Napkin. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Kitchen towel or napkin or something like that. Okay. Okay. So that these are the small, small uh, cultural changes because we are we are more like a British culture because right. we are colonized by British people. So the terms which you use are British, but a lot of terms over here in the US are uh, American terms. Like they call a bicycle as a bike, bike. Correct. and stuff like that. So you will over the period of time change uh, and know a different kind of terminology for the same thing, as well as you will have an accent change. A lot of people do have a slight accent and that's not deliberate. Mm. That's because a lot of people don't really understand your accent. In campus it happens very rarely, but out of campus it happens a lot. And the Mexican uh, people do not really understand Indian accent that well. So you might have to speak in a little American accent and with time that accent should happen. So these are all the things that I wanted you to be aware of before you come to the US. I really hope that this has helped you. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. You can also DM me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at shachi.mal. And we also have tons of useful resources for F1 visa preparation. So if you're still preparing for the F1 visa or if you know someone who is going to appear for their F1 visa interview, do check the description box and make use of all the resources. And lastly, do check out Kimber Health. If you're going to come to the US, health insurance is a must and Kimber Health can really help you in that. And before you leave, I want you to hear a really sweet and inspiring message from Sudeek Shah from University of Southern California. And this message can really help you in getting into the right mindset before you arrive in the US. So do give this a look and I'll see you in the next one. I would advise them to uh, be a little less stressed about the move. The transition is, going, is, is a little difficult initially, but then it'll get easier. Eventually you'll get used to people who were very homesick or were not Act that could not get accustomed to the culture or the weather here in a few weeks I think mostly everybody gets used to so you don't don't be very stressful about the transition I would rather say uh, be welcoming enjoy and be prepared for it plan out the entire uh, ed the program or duration properly chart your plans chart your objectives talk to people again and just ensure you have a foolproof plan and stick to the plan okay. and also like uh, also prioritize the fun aspects there are a lot of things a lot of events that you can do here over the weekdays or the weekends so just don't keep don't stick to uh, your room and just don't keep preparing or looking for opportunities have as much fun as you can because there's so many events and it will cater to whatever your interests are in whichever field like you know us's campus is a very diverse campus with a lot of programs that they have uh, they, can, they cater to and whatever your wherever whichever field your interest lies in you have USC has something for everyone so you'll find events that are going on around the campus so you'll have to be more engaged in social activities fun events and parties and musical nights and all that